Dean Dark is an absurd, over-the-top comedy horror adventure that is intended for older audiences. Content warnings can be found in the episode descriptions. Hello and welcome to Dean Dark, a comedy horror adventure real play podcast loosely based on mechanics from Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition and starring some of history's most infamous monsters. I'm Danger Dangers, and I'm your host slash Crypt Keeper. Now this episode, as you've seen in the title, is a part two of a longer recording session. This is one that kind of went a little while and we had to split up into two for time. So this one does not have any recap attached to it. And like the previous time we've done this, it is highly encouraged and recommended that you go back and listen to the first one if you are not already caught up on it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump back into this episode already in progress. Uh, is Mary wearing the burlap sack on his head or no? I wasn't wearing the burlap sack, no. I was too busy focusing on the cultists. Okay. Dog is going to look at Mary not wearing the sack, do a dog sigh, <laughs> walk into the hallway, look at Phantom, go, bark. <laughs> and then he's going to start sniffing his way up the stairs and try and solve the mystery. Detective Dog's on the case. Did this just turn into Scooby-Doo? Hell yeah, just turned into Scooby-Doo. Let's go! <laughs> there are exactly four of you and a dog now, so... Yeah, yeah. That's what I gathered. <laughs> Pinkies is all I have to say. <laughs> Phantom's gonna be hot on the dog's trail because this is not everyone's knowledge, but the idea of face replacing <laughs> is kind of a, an appealing situation. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Okay. So I guess the two of us go upstairs. I'm going to lean forward while I'm sitting on the chair, stand up and look through the hole at Emotep. Going to kind of look back, awkwardly wave. <laughs> How you doing over there? Well, dust some of the ash off of his bones. Somebody made me a little bit upset and I act a little bit impulsively. And as you can see, blows out a single flame left on his um, robes. Little bit worse for wear, but eh? Oh, that's good to know. Looks like the other team is heading upstairs. We got some random dog that showed up. Is it yours? Kind of looks at the patch that's still in his hand. No one don't want to talk about it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he just takes off. Oh. As everyone makes their way into the primary lecture hall of the university... You see at the far back of the room, both of the cultists are rummaging around through the desk there. And you see the Cockney one pulls out a journal, says, oh, here's the information we're looking for right here. So uh, you go get this terrain right away. Uh, Want to make sure that uh, everything's uh, neat and tidy here, that we clean up all our loose ends. And the vampire takes the book and disappears into a puff of mist and flies out the window with the book kind of floating with it. Uh, Everybody roll perception. Nat 20. Oh my god. Oh, wow. With your nat 20, Imhotep, basically you see very briefly on the pages that it is the secrets of Hemocraft invocation. And you also notice that Cockney, also turning slightly Australian cultist, <laughs> has no clue you guys are in the room. Oh no, bro. He's turning Australian. Oh no. Sorry. <laughs> it seems like it's just this guy in the room, but you feel a presence in here as well. The first thing that Imhotep is going to do before anybody else steps further into the room, he's going to put his hand up, grab his focus, and he's going to once again cast the silence spell. The cultist in the far back of the room, still not noticing that you all are in here, goes to grab the whistle around his neck and blows and nothing happens. Looks a little confused and starts to mutter, realizes that he's not speaking, turns, looks, and sees all of you, and with a look of surprise, reacts and then gets a smirk over his face and mouths with no words coming out. Uh, you could see his mouth moving, saying, Well, 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 look who showed Oh, my up. God. If it isn't Mr. Tall, Dark, and Gruesome, still oh. a of fire, are you? Uh, but no sound <laughs> comes out. Isn't that exactly so what he original. said before, though? 
Yeah, he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and he sees you looking unimpressed as you read his lips and notice him saying verbatim exactly the thing he said before. <laughs> Shakes his head in confusion and then um, pulls out a long sword and readies himself. Uh... I would say at this point, Jack's going to go undetectable. Okay, go ahead. Dog going to run forward. I want to meet this guy, like, head on. Phantom screams silently uh, to no one because nobody can hear it. <laughs> Good gods, he's naked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then Frankenstein monster. Mm -hmm. As you are moving forward, you feel your leg catch on something. And as you look down at your feet, you see fleshy tendrils coming Ew. up out of the ground. Oh no. That begin to slowly wrap around your legs. Oh no. Make a dexterity saving throw. Oh no. Why you never go straight forward? <laughs> Since I ran by him, can I roll a perception to see if I know what's happening? Uh, go ahead. Roll perception with advantage. Dog, 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 dog time. Good thing I had advantage. Woo, okay. Bork, bork. Bork, bork. A uh, natural 21. With a 21, you see the earth below you getting a little bit displaced and something is digging up from below. You can tell it's big. I'm a dig, 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 dig. Okay, and as you dig and displace the dirt, Frankenstein monster, what was your saving throw? 14. 14 is not quite gonna do it. Nope, I had a feeling it wasn't. But Larry in dog form, as you are digging through the ground below you, mm -hmm. you unearth a head looking up directly at you. There is no life behind those eyes. There are just black voids where the pupils would be. Oh, no. It is the face of the janitor from earlier. <sighs> and you see a couple of other heads slither out beside it that are bearing down on the Frankenstein monster Ooh. as more tendrils begin to come up and wrap around him and have him pinned down ah. as this multi-headed creature that is a writhing mass of flesh with several different heads pokes up through and lets out a wail that is absolutely nothing because you are in silence. <laughs> <laughs> Only one of the heads is looking at you while the rest are all bearing down on the Frankenstein monster. There are three in total. I want to bite As it. you see this creature, let me make it visible for you. Oh! oh. <laughs> oh. I hate that token, it's Dan! Icky. I hate that token! He's icky! Get him out of here! I preferred the theater of the mind, thank you very much. Yeah! <laughs> it's oh. really creepy. Oh, God. As you see this pale, worm-like mass of necks with heads attached to them. One facing you, Larry. Two facing the Frankenstein monster. Only three in total as the rest kind of make their way down to an undulating and gelatinous body. And arms and tentacles writhe and pull it out of the ground. Everyone roll initiative. But, Larry, you will get to bite first. Yeah, I'm a little fighter. Yeah. 14. I rolled a nat one. I got another 21. Okay, that's a 21 for me. Mine is an unnatural 20. And this intensely disturbing creature rolled a two. <laughs> nice. And then Cockney Cultist will go before him. Uh, I, I really need to give this guy a name. Um, Boris. Very cute. Yeah, yeah, his name's Boris. Good. So this writhing demonic mass of stolen faces and undulating limbs and tentacles. It has three heads in total. It is a sort of non-Euclidean horrific creature from the abyss that is imitating the form of a hydra. It is a false hydra. Thank goodness. So we can cut off the heads and they won't grow back. I did not say that. Oh, oh. shit. Oh, damn it. <laughs> We have our initiative order. Everybody is in combat now. So oh. your bite hit. Yes. So go ahead and roll for damage. Six damage. I think the sad part is that in all of this, no one's wondering where Wolfman is. Isn't that so sad? I mean, I was going to be bringing that up, 
in character later but also at the moment all of us are just kind of following the dog yeah follow the dog to be fair phantom saw larry fully leave so i know that larry's fine <laughs> okay so it has taken six damage is there anything else that you want to do maybe i'll go a little closer to mary I don't think I can impose protector because I do not have a shield, but I think as long as I'm within five feet of him, I get advantage on attacks. Go ahead and make a perception roll. 16? With a 16, you can see hanging up on the wall, there is a decorative crest that has a coat of arms. It is a shield with two swords that is hanging up prominently <gasps> on the wall. I'm gonna be a shield dog. Well, I guess I got to head that way. I will say it is to your east, on the eastern wall, just hanging up prominently underneath a couple of flags. To my west. I could make it there, technically. I have a speed of 40 as a dog. So I think I'll bite and then see the shield and then head that way. And that will be my turn. Okay. So now it is the invisible man's turn. Uh, how high am I? Is this like a second story and then there's like everything underneath it or? Five feet above the lower floor. So oh, okay. just for context, there is basically a raised railing that is going around a lecture hall area that is several rows and layers of desks and chairs. There is up at the very far back of the room, a raised little podium, and there is a desk back behind that. The desk is where the cultist is in the back where most of the players are, are on the railing surrounding the seating area for students. The Frankenstein monster and the false Hydra are in the center of that lower um, desk and chair area. Okay, I think he's going to take, I want to say, the short sword and Van Helsing's dagger, jump over onto the desks, and then run over towards the false hydra is it standing on any legs at all its feet are underneath the floor and it's got a trunk like torso of flesh that is sticking up that all of the heads and limbs are bursting out of you know what i think for this turn jack is just going to jump over the railing he's gonna dash to take some cover behind the desk that's on the east side of the room. Okay, so on the furthest back row of chairs, you can hide and take cover back there. Yes, and I've got Abraham's dagger and the short sword equipped. Okay, Phantom, it is now your turn. I'm going to head on over to where Jack is, and it is time to tip my hand. I'm going to give my last bardic inspiration to him. It's going to be pink carnation, but when I give it to him, I look him actually in the eyes. And I boop his nose. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, he's just going to be super surprised and just just kind of mouths the words. Can you see me? Uh, and obviously, instead of answering, I now flee back to behind here. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's my turn. Nice. So Phantom, you hide up in the railings back by the door to the entrance of this lecture hall. So now it is the false Hydra's turn. And it is going to... Raise up the Frankenstein monster. Uh -oh. Open up unnaturally wide one of its jaws and bring him down to devour him. Oh, no. Oh, God. So Frankenstein monster, make a dexterity saving throw. Not a dexterity. 13. Oh. A 13's not going to do it. No, it is not. Oh, shit. So it maintains its grip on you as its oh, jaws no. open wider and wider, oh. and it drops you in. <gasps> no! Slams its jaws shut around you as you slide down its writhing mass of neck and plop down into its stomach. Ew, oh. no. Start raging. That will be its entire turn. So now it is Boris's turn. He tries again to like blow the whistle and no sound is coming out. And he sees that the uh, false hydra is not responding to his whistle, so he puts it back around his neck and then makes a run towards the closest one of you, which is the wolfman, who is still very far away. <laughs> and that will end his turn. Now it is the Frankenstein monster's turn. So you will take seven acid damage. Oh! I go into a rage. Of course. Because I have been eaten and I am pissed. 
and I am going to, uh, that's just not going to do very well. I just do the C again to, to try and lightning my way out of here. And that's going to be a guaranteed hit. Good. I'm going to say it auto crits. So oh, even better. roll two D6 of damage. Hell yeah. Nine total, a six and a three. And I wish I had a sword so I can start stabbing my way, but I am going to, actually, it is a bone, right? Yes. Does it come to a little bit of a point, or is it blunt all the way around? What I will say, you've been able to keep it out of the stomach acid thus far. Uh If you wanted to try to sharpen it, you will risk damaging it and Mm. breaking it, but Mm. you can try to use that acid to eat away at it to get to a more sharp point. All right, I'm going to try and roll for that so I can make my bone warhammer a little sharper. Roll just a straight d20. Oh, God. If there was ever a time I needed a crit, it was this. I don't know. Are you fucking kidding me? I felt the greed. It's a bad one. No. (laughs) Hopefully you got another weapon. (laughs) So your Warhammer Bone Club. Uh Uh-huh. Disintegrates. (laughs) You are now back to a standard club. Oh, no. Wait, doesn't he have the spear? I do have the spear. He could have switched to that. (laughs) I'm a dumbass. You technically have not taken any actions this turn, so I will let you do that if you want to. Yeah, because I'm going to use the javelin to try and, like, poke my way out. Okay, go ahead and roll to hit. I thought that was an auto hit. Oh, that yeah, no, that's an auto hit. Roll to see if you crit. Oh, yeah. Well, that's an 18. Ooh. With an 18, I'll say make that a D8 plus your strength. Yay! Hi. D8. Thank so you. So kind. So kind today, especially since I was so freaking sad because I lost my goddamn club. I mean, if you saw this thing's stats, you wouldn't think I was kind. <laughs> oh, yeah. I th- that's what I assume is happening is you're like, oh, these guys are doing so hot. Um, yeah, take take the extra spice. Uh, that's a four plus three, seven. Do I make any headway of getting out of this guy's stomach? Pilot it like a mecha. Come on. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. As your chance. I did my turn. Now it's your turn. <laughs> Is everyone going to get a chance? So it reels a little bit in pain, but holds fast. I'm kind of like Drax in the beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy 2, where he's like stabbing the stomach trying to get out. Exactly. <laughs> so now it is the Wolfman's turn. So Dog Grab Shield turns around, sees Mary is gone, thinks, I leave for just five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what happens. I take a mighty leap onto the false hydra. I I bite into it and I'm trying to like dig into it to get him out. I'm trying to dig, 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 dig. <laughs> okay, so roll to hit with advantage. Unnatural 20. Ooh. Okay, so that hits. And then a d6 plus my strength. So five, six, seven damage. Okay. Am I able to get any progress into the body of this thing to get Mary out. Where are you biting? A neck or the torso? I guess the neck would be easier and softer to get into. I'll go for the neck then. Dig, 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 and bite, bite, bite. So as you follow your instincts and listen to the voice of Phil from Kingdom Hearts 2 inside your head yell, Get up on the Hydra's back! <laughs> and bite into its neck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hate you, it. Thanks. You bite into its neck and dig, 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 dig. And with surprisingly little give, the head attached to that neck pops off. All right. It is now down to two heads and a stump. Hmm. I think I'm going to use my fighter thing I can do called Action Surge, which I can take an extra action once per rest. So Ooh. I'm going to jump to another neck. I'm going to bite and I'm going to dig, 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 dig. Okay. Roll to hit with advantage. A 23. Ooh, nice. A 23 does hit. What's the lowest we've rolled so far against this thing? A one. <laughs> well, okay. that, that doesn't help You're right. me, but. Well, that's the lowest I've been rolling, dude. <laughs> and that will do four damage. Okay. You aren't able to get all the way through this neck. The head stretches forward, swings around, and looks down at you. <laughs> I'm hanging on like a dog playing tug of war. I do those like little pull backs and just err, err, err. Earlier, after I was eaten and now I was in the stomach, I'm like, ah, I'm in pain. 
Uh, and then the way I lost my bone club is I tripped on the previous dinner that hadn't fully dissolved. <laughs> Ew. Oh. Oh. You see the lower <laughs> half of the janitor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Yep, I tripped on that, dropped my bone club, it goes into the stomach acid, and I just, <laughs> and I would be swearing, I would be saying all the obscenities, but I'm in silence, so nothing is happening. So now it is the invisible man's turn. Uh, shoot, man. I figure maybe the dog is okay with the necks, and I'm gonna go for my sneak attack on the stomach. Okay, so go ahead and roll to hit with advantage. Oh my god, that's a 20. <gasps> Nat 20, nice. Hell yeah. Nat 20. Oh my god. What is that, like three so far? Yeah, it's been a great and terrible day for dice rolls. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about balance. So that crits. I take the short sword and I'm going to just drive it right into the stomach as deep as I can. Maybe I'm going to make a little bit of headway for Frankenstein to essentially walk out. Don't poke him. Uh, I'm trying not to, but then as I get inside, I'm going to turn the blade to the side and drag it horizontally. So that way, while I'm running off to the side, I'm out of its reach, hopefully. But that's where I plan to end the turn. Go ahead and roll for damage. So that's 21 damage with that. And then while that's happening with my offhand, I want to stick in Van Helsing's dagger and drag it along slightly above it. So I'm making like two incisions into the side of this thing and just dragging both blades, hopefully getting the bump out of there. So I'm ending my turn over here. Frankenstein's monster, you can see a little bit more light kind of filtering through the skin in front of you. The skin has not been breached, but you can tell that that was a pretty deep incision. Yay! That will end Invisible Man's turn, so Imhotep, it is your turn. So could I potentially just vault over, could I get up and vault over the table and have that count, or do I have to go all the way around? Uh, I'll say you can jump over the table. In that case, I'm going to do my green flame blade. 18. An 18 does not hit. Oh, mm. son of a bitch. Oh, man. Dan. Get out of well, there. <laughs> well, I still have 15 feet of movement, so I'm going to go one, two, three. <laughs> yup. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> and that ends your turn. So now it is the Phantom's turn. All right. All right. All right. The hero. <laughs> I go hero mode. <laughs> I'm going to run behind this desk a little bit north very much east i'm gonna try to shoot a crossbow bolt man we're gonna see how that goes oh oh shit i didn't know you had a crossbow oh my god our first crossbow fire i know our first actual <laughs> physical attack from the bard Whoa. yeah yeah uh, and i do want it to be incredibly clear for flavor that i am fumbling with it as i get it <laughs> like i've never loaded this before like it is purely for decoration i am looking at it like distastefully that weird thing where you hold it at like angles looking at it trying to figure out what it's for <laughs> are you aiming it like the stereotypical 90s gangster where they hold it above their head and they cock it to the side and aim it downwards uh, i'll do you one better it is both hands at stomach level, straight oh my God. Of <laughs> like grandma style. No. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here's what I'm going to do with that. Because I don't want you to attack with disadvantage. What I will say is, depending on your roll to hit, you will get kickback. <laughs> okay. I swear to okay. God. Poor Phantom. Phantom flies everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm going to shoot it at a uh, Cockney accent guy. Oh, oh. Okay. So go ahead and roll to hit. Oh, not 20. Hey. Oh, yes. nice. Yeah. All right. So what I will say too for that, so you will get knocked back 10 feet. Oof and all that. And he will take the damage. This is as he's trying to stuff the whistle back under his tunic. And as he takes damage, he jolts back in surprise and it rips off around his neck and goes flying about 15 feet in front of him. Ooh. Okay, so we're in between it and him. Can Jack roll for perception to see? Uh, No, because you see it. Oh, okay. It did do three damage, by the way. Yeah. So now it is the False Hydra's turn, and it gets one action per head. Oh, God. Oh, no. It only has two left. That's true, it does. It's going to take one action to try and grow back the one that was cut off. 
<laughs> yes, dude. So it gets 33% regrown. Uh... Then it will take its second action to try and bite at the wolfman. Uh... Miss, 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 miss. Uh... 12. What is my dog? AC. Ha ha ha. That's a miss. That's a miss. Ah, ah! Suck it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Dog's harder to hit than my person. <laughs> this head makes a lunge at you and you're able to kind of wriggle around and it hits your shield. <laughs> Bing. And so those are its two actions, the one regrowth and the one bite. It will take, it gets one bonus action, so it's going to regrow its head to 66%. And that will end its turn. No. Bark, 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 bark. <laughs> bark, bark. It is now Boris's turn, and he's going to roll perception to see if he saw the whistle go flying. Nope, oh, don't look. Don't see it. <laughs> don't see it. And with an eight, he does not. Yes! Ah! <laughs> so he is going to continue moving towards the closest person, which no, no. is... he doesn't see me. He does not see you, that's right. I'm invisible. <laughs> invisible! <laughs> So he's going to run towards the closest person he can see, which will be Imhotep, but he can't get all the way there. So he's going to get about five feet away from Imhotep. He's going to run. He's going to um, climb over one of the desks and get almost up to Imhotep, not quite within reach, but still about five feet in front of you. So now it is the Frankenstein monster's turn again. Get out of there. I am trying my damnedest to get out of this stupid stomach. Do I take another? Yes, you do. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, what's the damage? That is eight. Oh, oh no. no. So I'm you take two, eight three, acid damage. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, I am not. I mean, I'm okay. Eh? Are you in single digits? Uh, no, I'm still Okay, in then you're fine. Then you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Grayson, are you in single digits? Yes. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, 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 I'm fine. All right, uh, yeah, I'm just going to take the javelin and continue to GTFO out of this stupid stomach. By the way, you can do the Storm Herald thing every turn using your <gasps> bonus action. I did not know this, and Her I am mad him. at myself because I'm going to keep using my lightning powers. Hell yeah. I am the storm. That's just free damage right there. That is free damage. 2d6. Well, screw both of you. It's a total of four. So it will take four damage. Uh, do I roll to try and continue to get out of the stomach? Make that hole wider. Roll to see if you crit. You will hit automatically, but... All right, cool. 17, okay, not okay. bad. So go ahead and roll for damage. That's going to be a d6 plus your strength. Uh, Seven, grand total. Okay, so you will deal it another seven damage. And that's going to puncture through his stomach so you can see the light spilling in. Oh, Yay! yes! You are still inside, but you can now see through. Yay! All right, so now it is the wolfman's turn. I helped. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I know this is going to surprise everyone, but I'm a bite. <laughs> what? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Ooh, 11. That does not hit. I believe you still have inspiration from earlier with the sack thing. <gasps> I do. Thank you. Okay, so that's an 18 plus 7. That hits. Yes. <laughs> that's 8 damage. All right. And so that gets the rest of the way through the neck that you had your teeth around. So it's down to one head. One and Whoa. a half. Yeah. One point six six. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think that's all I can do, except I guess I wiggle on over to the other head, but don't bite it quite yet. Okay. So now it is the invisible man's turn. Okay. Curious. Did Emotep see the whistle thing? Or was the monstrosity kind of like in the way? I will say Imhotep does not know about the whistle. Damn it. Because my goal is to like signal end the silence thing because now we have the thing that stops them from disappearing. Or what would I have to roll to chuck it? Because I want to try and throw it towards Phantom. That would be athletics. Oh, God. I could always meet you there and take it on my turn. Yeah. I want to run over, grab the whistle, run back as far as I can, 
and then essentially signal to Emotep, we've got the whistle, but if he doesn't see it, I want to hand it off to Phantom because, of course, everyone can see Phantom. <laughs> but essentially, like, I'm just trying to see if we can use the whistle. Okay. So I will have you roll performance for that. Would I still be able to hand it off if it doesn't work? If it doesn't work, you could still hand it off. Okay, so Jack is just going to jump on top of the tables and kind of like, you know, hopscotch over across, <laughs> grab the key, and then you said roll for performance. Yeah, roll performance to get Imhotep's attention. It will be a disadvantage because you're invisible. Exa yeah, I totally saw that coming. I mean, it makes sense. Oh, wow. I rolled the same thing twice. Uh, it was a three plus four, so that's a seven. With a seven, you're not able to get his attention. Okay. So at that point, I'm trying to wave the whistle towards Phantom to show him that I've got the whistle now. So now it is Imhotep's turn. I guess I'm going to, since I haven't seen Jack jacking around. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. That's not what I meant. <laughs> nope, nope. Don't say it, Ben. Don't say it, Ben. You could maybe roll for perception to see if you see a floating whistle. I don't know. I'm... Dan? Uh, sure. So, seven was what you rolled for performance? Uh, yeah, seven. I'm gonna say you have to roll above a 16 perception to be able to see it. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> I rolled exactly 16. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah! Oh. He sees the floating whistle! <laughs> All right, you see it. So, this is how I imagine he drops the spell. It's not so much a conscious decision of I'm going to drop the spell because I totally understand what's happening. He drops it just so he can go, what are you doing? You strange, invisible person. And that's that's him dropping the spell. <laughs> okay. He loses concentration. Just he loses concentration because he's distracted watching his whistle <laughs> wave in the air back and forth. <laughs> Okay, now it's time for the hero to save the day. <laughs> well, real quick, I guess... Um, I mean, unless you want to run over and try and blow the whistle. Well, I mean, I dropped the spell, but I still have my action and stuff, right? Yeah. So I'm going to toll the dead at Boris. Okay, that is a wisdom save? Yes. That is a seven. <laughs> Fifteen is what he needs to pass. Oh, nice! So seven's not going to do it. Okay, so he takes, he's damaged, right? Yeah, he yes, is. he is. Pretty heavily. So he takes 1d12 damage. Hell oh. yeah. Go ahead and roll for damage. 12, 12, 12. That is 11. <laughs> I'll take it, I'll take it. 11. And describe your killing blow. Yes. 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 I was hoping. I was hoping. Imhotep is watching Boris do his thing where he eventually makes it across the table from him. And out of the corner of his eye, sees the whistle waving back and forth, drops the spell, asks, what are you doing, you strange, invisible person? And can I get, like, five feet of movement with the spell? Sure. He climbs onto the table, grabs Boris by the face, and begins to do the thing where his mouth opens unnaturally. The lights in his eyes flicker out. There is nothing in his eyes anymore. And, ooh. Can I flavor my necrotic damage in a really horrifying way? Uh, please do. We go full <laughs> 1999 movie. Hell yeah, that's what I was hoping for. Scarab beetles pour my mouth into his yeah. and begin to oh. <laughs> I was so hoping that you were going to go that way. <laughs> oh. The beetles, they eat them. Ew. They just start pouring through all of his orifices as I hold his head in I place. I want to hear Boris scream. Oh. You can't. There's beetles in his throat. Oh. Yeah. Dan, can you do a Cockney accent scream, but your mouth is full of beetles? <laughs> can you do um. a Cockney accent scream, but your mouth is full of beetles? That's the <laughs> quote of the day. <laughs> Welcome to our comedy podcast. I hope you don't hate <laughs> bugs, because you will after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Horrifying. Thank you for oh, doing that for me, Dan. I appreciate yeah. it. It's a little more Australian, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's kind of like crouched on the table, holding Boris's head until eventually the body has been eaten away and the bugs kind of melt back into the floor. No, and yeah. just the head left in his hands. You mean... Which he tosses to the side. I'm so glad that Larry is in dog mode right now and is just not perceiving what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was gonna say, is is the dog gonna throw up into the into the neck hole of the? Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's the fun thing about dog form for Larry is his brain is so much more at peace when he's in dog mode because he's just living the simple life of I'm a dog, bark, 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 bite, 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 dig, 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 dig. Because Larry would be absolutely horrified. So yeah, Imhotep is now like crouched on the table awkwardly. <laughs> okay, so now it is the Phantom's turn. I will, of course, run north, snag the whistle out of the invisible man's hand. And I want it to be like I'm grabbing it and kind of like pushing him away by the face. <laughs> Still very rude, very disrespectful. <laughs> and then I'm going to look at the monster. Looks like your time in the sun is done. And then blow like wah, wah on the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you blow the whistle, its movement just stops. It lowers down all of its limbs, all of its remaining necks just kind of slop over. They turn to look at you and just kind of hold, waiting for further instruction. Do I get to keep it? Oh, God. Oh, God, please, do I get to keep it? I want to remind Phantom that Frankenstein's still in there. Can I hear this? Yes, you can. Cool. I yell from inside the false hider's stomach. I'm like, no, get me the fuck out of here right now. Tell it to throw him up. You give that response and you blow the whistle one more time and it begins to retch and you can see ripples going up its torso, a little bit spilling out of the hole in its stomach as its bile rises <laughs> and brings the Frankenstein monster up with it. And it, like a cat with a furball, <laughs> does that little, like, neck shimmy as it hacks up and then spits out the Frankenstein monster on the floor in front of it. Ew. I am just like, I feel violated in every single way possible. I was eaten. I was thrown up. And I am just sitting there with the javelin in my hand, my destroyed Warhammer, now club. And I'm just like, <clears throat> <sighs> Can we please kill this thing? I want it dead so goddamn bad right now. I'd like to ask it to fetch me the most handsome face in the English countryside. Oh my god. <gasps> and it cocks its one fully intact head. It twists its neck upside down in confusion. And then its face begins to shift and contort and mirrors back your porcelain mask. Oh. Is oh. it like a full mask or is it still the half? It is basically just a reflection of your face masked. Ooh. That's dark. So he's the most handsome one. Mm. His mask is the most handsome face, apparently. Well, that wasn't helpful. Uh, get it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so it hears, get him, boys. Oh, God. <laughs> and then it looks again in confusion and horror. Its neck stiffens out. And then the other two heads erupt out of the stumps that were left behind and then begin to turn on each other. And it begins oh. devouring oh. itself alive as it rise and contorts oh. Oh and my God. lets out an unearthly wail that lilts into the Dies Irae and it vanishes. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. And Larry, you are on the floor now, like 10 feet below where you were previously. I? Ooh. You don't drop <laughs> down. You are just suddenly on the ground. Okay. Uh, I think he's going to look around a little bit. Look at the Frankenstein monster just kind of melting a little bit. And he's going to run out the door. All right. And you are out of combat. Eric saves the day again. <laughs> and Phantom... I will let you remember its exact tune. Oh, no. Go ahead and roll Insight. Oh, God, please. Something sick as hell. Unnatural 21. All right. With a 21, you remember the cadence, the melody, the tone, the vibrato of its Dies Irae. And you have the insight to finally understand what was happening every time it did that. It was like the silence from Doctor Who <laughs> erasing itself from your memory every time it let out that melody. Oh. Interesting. Neat. Ooh. Spooky. Um, I was wondering if Jack could follow the dog because we had a random dog 
come in here, help us. Jack is watching it tear off two heads and now kind of wants to know, like, where is it going? I thought it was going to be with us. Uh, the dog has booked it downstairs. I would like to say that if Jack follows pretty quickly behind, you'll probably just find Larry putting on his, um, what do you call him? His suspenders and walking in to the front door very exhausted. So, Larry, roll dexterity. Okay. Uh, invisible man, roll, I'll say perception. Oh, my time has come. I rolled a 10. It is a three. Oh. So Larry in dog form runs towards the door, which then swings shut behind him as he makes his way down. You chase after him and run to throw open the doors, and Larry's human form is standing right in the doorway greeting you. Because <sighs> uh, Jack just rushes into the door, and I don't know if there's going to be like a collision right here. That would be really funny. <laughs> yeah, you throw open the door and Larry is knocked onto his butt. Okay. Boom. And then it's like, oh. I'm just going to crawl off and just be like, did you see the dog? Wait, where were you? Oh, uh, yeah, there was a dog. That was crazy. Um, so I, have you ever heard of the case of the fire gut? Fire, What? You ever eat something that really just like does not ooh uh, oof ouch owie? Roll and then... deception at disadvantage. <laughs> Damn it, no! The fire got the oof ouch owie. I was gonna say, can can I roll insight? Because also I'm looking to see if the shield is anywhere nearby as well. Bug. Roll investigation for the shield. Okay. I got a six for deception. So that's gonna be. 15. <laughs> so with a 15 versus a 6. <laughs> so you know Larry's not telling the truth. And you see just on the ground directly behind him is the shield. Larry, do you have something to say? Um? Because you're clearly not being honest right now. So I need to know what you're lying about. I would like that to run interference. Okay. Okay. Uh, what would you like to do? Larry, finally, you're back. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, 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 I missed it. How did it go in here? It was phenomenal. Did you get um, the thing I asked you for? Yeah, yeah. Frankenstein <laughs> feels like Larry doesn't want his like secrets and I know something's up, but I want Larry to tell us in his own time. So I'm just trying to help with the lie. I'm like, it wasn't great, Larry. It sucked. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Here's a question. Um, but yeah. Hmm. Can I insight check? Because I know, because Imhotep knows that Larry is under a curse. Can I insight check or something to put together that what just happened was at least a part of the curse with the dog? Roll Arcana and then unrelated, Invisible Man, roll Perception. Okay. I got an eight total. So with an eight, you can't quite piece that together yet. Oh, well. Uh, that's a 14. 14? You're still invisible, right? Yeah. So you look back towards where your pile of stuff is and your clothes are on fire. Oh, shit. <laughs> huh? I'm, I run over to like try and put them out. I whisper to Larry, I'm not going to let Jack bully you, but don't you dare run out on us again. Uh, I, I, I'm so sorry. I can, I can explain it at a different time when things have cooled down a little bit. It's, um, it's a little awkward, but I can explain. And Larry, your cards begin to vibrate oh uh, it it seems i'm getting a call uh and i i grab my cards so i'm like uh yes hello lawrence lawrence oh. where are you it is it is two days away from oh the full uh, moon we need uh, yes. to make our preparations <laughs> where are you and i slap the cards um uh, trust me, um, Maleva, I'm in good hands. Uh, uh, I'm uh, working with uh, my friends right now. I've got everything planned to the T. We're going to finish up here. I'm going to go see uh, some people about a thing. But I assure you that everything will get handled and I'll be back safe and sound before uh, the day. I, I appreciate that you are giving this your utmost attention and care. This is an important mission, but mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. how important it is that we be prepared for the full moon. Are you yes, absolutely yes, yes. certain that you yes. will be ready in time? I will be ready. It will be solved. You don't have to worry about it anymore. I will fix that problem. 
Everything will be fine. Then, Invisible Man, as you're stamping out the fire on your clothes, you see that the source of it is Marlo's business card. (laughs) (laughs) And as you pull it out from the heap of clothing, it disintegrates into ashes that swirl around and form his face. And he says, um... All right, have I have I reached you all right, then? Uh, d- don't worry, I will take care of... I will get you another business card. I'm sorry, that's an unfortunate side effect of that, but hello, everyone. I just needed to reach you real quick. I have something that uh, might be up your alley to hear. You might be very interested in this message from... Uh, I take it, one of your own. I'm back over here chilling it in Stratford, and uh, who should I spot but a four foot eleven, white haired, vampiric lady running around in a frenzy? She's ranting and raving about some kind of revenant, and uh, you hear his voice get a little bit muffled as he gets shoved aside, and you hear Carmilla's voice coming through this scrying call say, "He could be anywhere." Please, come to Stratford right away. I need your help. Uh. Oh. Oh. Um, I don't know if this is going to fit into my itinerary, but, um. Lawrence? I guess, Maleva, I'll call you back. Don't you dare put yourself in a position where you will not be prepared on the night of the full moon. You know what can happen. I hang up. I hang up. (laughs) I flip the cards in on themselves. (laughs) Lawrence, look, look. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, we had a really tight schedule before, but shit. Okay, if Carmilla's in trouble, we can, if we hop back really quick, solve that, get back to the witches. Uh, everything should be dealt with in time. Yes, I think we could do it. We just have to be fast. Uh, let's go. Let's head back to Stratford as quickly as possible. Run, run, run. I was hoping to try and search for uh, Boris's longsword. <laughs> Roll perception. <laughs> oh, hey, it's a uh, 15. With a 15, you don't find his longsword, but you do find a short sword. I'll take it. Um, okay. Oh, okay. So Marlo kind of scrambles back through the ashes. His face kind of shoves Carmilla aside and says, Right. So that. Um, it's really not that important. It's just a a run-of-the-mill garden variety revenant really isn't that big a deal. You hear behind him a familiar feminine voice say, Is that Marlo Bronte? In my town. Uh Uh-oh. When I've told you time and again that you are not welcome here. Oh, shit. Sorry, I gotta go. Bye. (laughs) Uh. And the ashes scatter into the wind. Um... Did I save any of my clothes? <laughs> Your clothes are fine. Oh, okay. They're a bit singed, but they're still fine. Okay. Emoto uh, kind of raises his hand and go, does that mean that our contact is now Gonzo? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, oh, <boo. laughs> We are the outcasts, the spits you might say. We deal with the nightmares that you run away from every single day. We know the world is a gruesome little place. But us outsiders, we've developed quite a taste for the grisly and morbid, the ghastly and the horrid. We know it's awful, dreadful, but we like it. Just another haunted night, shrouded with unearthly fright. So when you're oh so terrified, you know who to call. The world is falling apart, we'll never take you to heart. So monsters and creatures and spirits and specters and all, let's all have a ball. It is now down to two heads and a stump. Hmm. It would let out a um, <laughs> ear piercing scream of pain, but it's not, you don't hear anything because you're in silence. Mm hmm. What a thrilling fight. <laughs> For our audio drama, having everything be muted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. You just, like, all right, everybody, and use the silence spell on the next, like, 20 minutes of the podcast are just in silence. I know. <laughs> you got a great encounter, everybody. Wow, it was thrilling. <laughs>